why didn't Voldemort kill Harry earlier? Why did Dobby die? How did he die? Why, why did he have to die? Why did Dumbledore leave Harry on the doorstep of the Dursley's house when he knew how bad they were? Now, these are a few of the things we're going to talk about in today's video, so keep watching, guys. <laughs> How are you doing today? Hope you are doing fine. Now in today's video I'll be talking about ma the many reasons why Harry Potter movies do not make sense. And starting with the first movie, Harry Potter and the Saucer Stone or Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. So in the first movie, why did Double O leave Harry Potter at the house of the Dursleys when he knew how bad the Dursleys were? And secondly, he knew how badly they would treat him and he still left them on the door. Now a lot of people give the explanation that Harry's be with Harry's only relatives and that he has some sort of blood pact with them which would help him be safe against Voldemort because of Lily's blood being in Petunia's blood but honestly that theory does, does not hold still now. Another thing wrong that is gravely wrong with the Philosopher's Stone is why did the Dursleys move to an absolutely random place in the middle of nowhere with no electricity, no plumbing, nothing just to avoid Harry's letters. I mean, how do they get the food in there? How do they get everything in there? That makes no sense as to why they would move to an absolute random island in the middle of nowhere just because they did not want letters from Hogwarts. In the scene where Hagrid goes with Harry Potter to Gringotts Bank for the first time to collect his money and see his bank account, why in the world would he take an 11-year-old Harry with him on a top secret task that Dumbledore gave him to do, which was take the Philosopher's Stone from the chest, from the vault? from the secret vault, why would he take 11 year old Harry who knows nothing about nothing, should not be knowing about that task and Hagrid takes him to the vault with him, why would he do that? Now in the first movie of course, platform 9 and 3 quarters, there's only one way to enter that platform for wizards and that is going through a particular wall that makes you go into their world. Now there are a lot of muggles in that station and not once did a single muggle see them go through the wall ever in the entire series, despite the fact of it being so evident and so plain sight. I mean, these people literally were just walking beside them and they saw them going to the wall and they still did not do anything. Now, in the Chamber of Secrets, in the final scene, as you remember, Gilroy Lockhart, Ron, Harry and Ginny fly with by grabbing onto Phoenix from another opening in a cave somewhere out of the Chamber of Secrets. How in the world were they able to find that opening and where is that opening in the castle? Early in the movie, Dumbledore said they had searched the castle numerous times and no such, no such chamber secret has been found. However, it seems very apparent that there was a clear gap in the area, some kind of rock cave formation where Phoenix came out from. I have no clue. But why didn't Dumbledore shut down the school after a numerous students were petrified? First, Mrs. Norris' cat was petrified. Second, there was blood writing on the wall. Ginny Weasley, a student, was taken into the chamber of secrets. Then Colin Creevy was again petrified. Hermione was petrified. Despite four, almost four students and Mrs. Norris being petrified. In Dumbledore, the great man did not shut down the school and the students were still attending their regular classes. That is some... Um, wow, that, that, that cannot happen. Another thing which is gravely, which is really, really strange about Chamber of Secrets is Gilderoy Lockhart. We all know Gilderoy Lockhart is this fraud who thinks, what makes the world think he did these great things, write these books about them and becomes hugely, hugely successful with best-selling books. However, of course, he's a fraud and he uses memory charms to erase previous wizards' memories who've done these things and then takes credit for their achievements. Dumbledore, being a great wizard, has somehow overlooked this fact and hired Gilderoy Lockhart anyway. Didn't he know he was a bad person? Didn't he know he was a fraud? More frighteningly, if he did, he still chose to hire him, maybe to have a laugh or something. Moving on to the third movie, which is The Prisoner of Azkaban. Now, this movie has a few of the biggest blunders that I have seen in Harry Potter. Now, time turners are the devices that help you travel back and forth in time in the Wizarding World. Hermione was given one by Professor McGonagall in the Prisoner of Azkaban movie, and she helped save the day, saved Buffy, saved Harry, and saved a lot of people, ended up saving their lives. Now, how in the world do time turners exist? Time turners make absolutely no sense. A wizard with the ability to go back in time can literally solve anything. Why don't they go back in time and kill Voldemort? Why don't they go when he's a baby and just, you know, makes no sense. Even J.K. Rowling herself said that time turners were definitely a big mistake in the wizarding world. Now, Sirius Black, of course, was seen in the film in the starting as a dog. Now, the big question is, why didn't he approach Harry in the beginning? Why was he howling and uh, roaring at him in the beginning instead of actually going there and, you know, telling him that, hi, Harry, I'm your godfather and I am 
here to help you and I love you and I was not the killer and I am innocent and Peter better to kill, help kill your parents and I am, yeah, I'm, I'm completely fine. Why are the books trying to attack the kids? Now, in The Care of Magical Creatures, the, the subject taught by Hagrid in The Prisoner of Azkaban, at least in the film, is where the books you see Neville trying to open a book, Harry stomping on the book early in the film trying to control and open it. Why in the world would your books try to eat you? Why can't you just have a regular book that you want to use? Not everything in the Wizarding World has to be magical, does it? Next is the fourth movie in the series, The Goblet of Fire. Now, first one is Dumbledore screaming at Harry. Why did Dumbledore scream at Harry in the movie is a big question. Now, in the books, Dumbledore politely and calmly says, why did you did you put your name in the Goblet of Fire, Harry? Did you put your name in the Goblet of Fire? In the movies, however, it's a different story. Dumbledore screams out at Harry for no apparent reason. Now, in the Goblet of Fire, as you know, is a sacred object. Now, only people above the age of 17 were allowed to put their names in the Goblet of Fire. However, we saw Fred and George trying to trip the system by putting a spell on them and then trying to put their names in the Goblet of Fire, which of course backfired, leading them to become old for a couple of moments. Why didn't any of the older kids try to put the younger kid's name on a piece of paper and throw it in the Goblet of Fire. Wouldn't that work? And why did not a single student think of that? And even if they did think of that, would it work? And would it really register their name? The Dragon Task, which was the first task in the Tribal the Tournament, is next up because the Dragon Task makes absolutely no sense. In the movie, Harry is assigned the Hungarian Horntail horn -tail Dragon to fight and basically grab the golden egg from in the first task. However, this makes absolutely no sense as Harry literally is yeeted off state and he's completely somewhere else in the castle, almost dying and is almost killed by the dragon, while the entire audience is watching absolutely nothing for a good solid 15 to 20 minutes if you saw the film, at least that's what it looked like. That task made absolutely no sense. Harry could have literally died in the fourth film. There was nobody watching that task for 15 to 20 minutes and that the dragon just broke the leash and flew out. Now on to the fifth movie. Dumbledore is, as you saw, ignores Harry for the entirety of the movie. Harry tries to constantly talk to him, but Dumbledore does not talk to him and does not want to talk to him. Now at the end of the movie, of course, in a talk segment, which was a great segment in the book as well as in the movie, Dumbledore explains to Harry why he did not talk to him the rest of the movie. This explanation seems kind of unfair and kind of just not not buying. If Dumbledore really did care about Harry, why wouldn't he tell him about the Order of the Phoenix? Why wouldn't he tell him about a secret society to fight Voldemort and his army? Why wouldn't he help him out with finding out things, finding spells? Why wouldn't he train him? Why wouldn't he talk to him? Why wouldn't he tell him the truth? When he, being Dumbledore, really cares for Harry, he should have talked to him before the movie. Now, the Department of Mysteries in the final battle, Voldemort is, has, let's be honest, numerous opportunities to kill Harry and just Avada Kedavra and spell him, just kill him right there and right then. But again, of course, Voldemort being Voldemort takes his eternity to kill Harry and just does not use his opportunities that well. If Voldemort whispering in Harry's ear and all that stuff and trying to, you know, get into him and you know, get into his mind or something when he could have easily done an Avada Kedavra for a second and would have killed Harry and would have had no chance in blocking it. But of course, two seconds later, Ball Dumbledore shows up and they have this awesome battle which was a great, great battle by the way. It was probably my favorite battle in the entire series. It was the two most powerful wizards fighting and dueling against each other. Moving on to the Half-Blood Prince now. This movie has been getting a lot of hate. It got a lot of hate when it released because of it being so different from the books. Now in the books there is a tremendous amount of more focus on the Horcruxes and the relationship between Double and Harry and how they move forward. However, in the films they tried to take the more romantic comedy sort of route with bringing in Lavender and spending way too much time showing us what happened between Lavender and Ron, which Let's be honest, nobody wanted to see. Instead, we wanted Horcruxes. We would have loved to have more story and more connections with Harry. We would have wanted to know more about the Horcruxes, how they formed, why Voldemort made them, who he killed them to make them, and all that stuff. That backstory between Voldemort, his mother, his parents would have been fascinating to see. But unfortunately, we just have the books for that. Now, in the movie, Dumb Voldemort clearly, Tom Riddle, as a student, asks Horace, Horace Ragon about Horcruxes that he found while reading books in the library in the restricted section. Now, as soon as he said this line, he should have been expelled, he should have been taken to the headmaster's office. He was in the restricted section of the library reading about Horcruxes, the most powerful dark magic tool in the world that has been used by about two wizards in, ever in the history of magic. 
Tom Riddle should have been immediately sent to the principal's office for being in a restricted section in the first place. I don't know, these type of movies have a way of getting to you and annoying you. Now, Horcruxes have been a big part of the Hypers universe. Of course, Voldemort makes Horcruxes, seven Horcruxes, splits his soul into seven pieces by killing seven people. Now, Horcruxes being such a dark, magical, powerful tool that enables the user to live forever, you think Dumbledore, the greatest wizard of all time, would know about them, right? No, because apparently in the movie and in the books, Dumbledore seems to have no clue what the Horcruxes are and is really just researching all the time, looking into memories, looking into Voldemort's past and just analyzing it, trying to find out what they are. Now, thirdly, why is there a book of Horcruxes, a book about Horcruxes in the school library? Somebody must have told them, you know what, there's a book on Horcruxes, which is possibly the most dangerous dark magical tool you should ever use and it's disgusting and it's disturbing and it's violent. You know what, well, let's put it in the school libraries for kids to read. Now, in Harvard Print, of course, again, Malfoy was on the plot, on the route to kill Dumbledore. He was chosen by Voldemort to kill Dumbledore. However, his plan obviously completely failed in the end. Snape kills Dumbledore. We, we see Malfoy doing a lot of tasks, trying to get poisonous things to Dumbledore. He gives a cursed necklace to Katie Bell, hoping she'd give it to Dumbledore. Then he also has poisoned, you know, licorice flavored wine that he hopes that Horace Slughorn would give to Dumbledore. All these things and all these attempts were completely a, a big failure. And of course, at the end, at the Battle of the Astronomy Tower, Dumbledore knows that Malfoy was the one behind all of these occurrences. However, despite knowing the entire time, he does nothing about it. In true Dumbledore fashion, he is completely ignorant. And I don't know why he could have saved a lot of time. He could have saved a lot of people, but yeah. I don't know what that is. Now we are at Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part One, which is the second last film in the series. Now this movie also has a couple of couple of issues and a couple of problems that I have personally with it, and I think that are quite problematic and just simply unexplained. First one, first one is well, Dumbledore not telling Harry about how to destroy Horcruxes, or simply just even giving a clue or a simple hint to him about how to destroy Horcruxes. Dumbledore, of course, in the Hufflepuff Prince in previous movies, was researching Horcruxes and was clearly, as shown, finding out about what they are. He was frequently traveling, as Snape told to Harry many times throughout the series when he asked him where Dumbledore was. He was looking for Horcruxes, he was researching them. However, in the movie, again, Dumbledore had no idea, or did he, about how to destroy Horcruxes? And if he did, why didn't he not tell Harry? Why couldn't he just, you know, written it down on a piece of paper and be like, you know, Harry, just this is how you kill a Horcrux. Use, use a sword or use the fang of the thing, the the basilisk. Also, I've just realised that a lot of these problems and weird things of, about Harry Potter come from just Dumbledore throughout the series. And from the starting of this video, I've mentioned Dumbledore a lot of times. So just so you know, I don't hate Dumbledore. I love Dumbledore. I think he's probably my second favorite character in the series. Now this one was quite frustrating and sad. It is Dobby's death. Now seemingly there's nothing wrong about Dobby dying, but I think there is quite an issue that I've found out with Dobby dying. Now in the scene at Malfoy Manor, Dobby of course rescues Harry Potter, Ron, Hermione and everyone by teleporting. He takes, you know, better trips to strangers. One he takes now to the Malfoy's wand. And then he tries to apparate with them out of there, but at the last second of course better trips the strange throws a knife and that hits Dobby in the stomach and Dobby dies. <laughs> now, of course, this seems pretty normal, but however, I found out one thing about this was that while apparating, Dobby doesn't necessarily open a portal. You see, when a person apparates in the Harry Potter universe, at least that's whatever I know, there is no portal that is formed. Instead, you just grab the person who's apparating their arm and then you sort of weird, go into this weird tangent and sort of mix out and then you transport to wherever you want to go. The knife, in its essence, travels through a portal and then goes and hits Dobby in the stomach, which realistically should not be possible if there is no portal in the first place, because it's not like a portal opens and then you go through a knife with it, there's no portal. I love how detailed this is, the description is, so guys, keep watching, and there's one more movie left. If you like this video, if you're still here, let me know if the final movie is coming up next. Finally, on to the last movie, Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 2. This movie, of course, in the beginning, Hermione turns into Bellatrix using the Bellatrix Potion and the attempt to go into Bellatrix's vault to find the Horcrux, which is Helga Hufflepuff's cup, which they think is in Bellatrix's vault. 
Now, what I don't understand about this scene particularly is they did have Beatrix's wand in that scene, however, they still refused to give it. Now, in the end, of course, Ron does an Imperius curse, and they manage to get in. Ron, Hermione did initially have Bellatrix's wand, so I don't understand why she didn't present it at the counter when asked to do so, because clearly in the movie, when in the beginning they go to Ollivander's to ask him about the wands, they have Bellatrix's wand with them, so why didn't they give it to Hermione? I don't know. Now this one is one that's bothered a lot of people and it is very very annoying honestly. This is Voldemort hiding his Horcrux. Now obviously throughout the series we find Voldemort has hidden, in, hidden his Horcruxes in various places that are so obvious literally I mean a kid could find them. He hid his Horcrux in Hogwarts, in Cotrix Hollow, then one in the middle of a rock sort of island, one in Bellatrix's boat, one was his snake, one was Harry. I mean being the smart and great dark wizard that Dumbledore is. You would expect him to hide Horcruxes, his parts of his soul, which are so important to him, and help him in being immortal in more tough, difficult to find places. Maybe go to the bottom of the sea, go to the bottom of the Mariana Trench and dip one of your cups or one of your Horcruxes in there. Nobody would find them in there. Nobody would ever look in there. But instead, where does he put it? He puts it in his school where he studied, in the place where he killed Harry's parents. One of them is his snake. Why would he put the Horcruxes in such obvious places? Helga Hufflepuff's cup was in one of his trusty sidekicks, if that's what you call Bellatrix, in her vault. Why would he do that? Why couldn't he hide it in the randomest deserts, oceans, mountains, where nobody would find them and he could truly be immortal? Instead, they're hidden in the most obvious of places for Harry and his friends to find. Now, again, why, another point is, why don't all the students make shields? Now, in the movie, you see Harry and you know, Harry, um, Ron and Hermione running away while Professor McGonagall, Flitwick and a couple of other professors are trying to make a shield around the castle to protect from Voldemort and his army's attack. Now in the scene we see very few teachers doing the scene. Now, presumably maybe off screen or maybe it wasn't shown in the movie, there were a lot of other students making the shield. However, in the movie as it was shown, there was no other student making the shield. You would think more students making the shield would make it stronger and better and perhaps give more of a protection against Voldemort, but then again, they did not do that. It was just a couple of professors that were shown, Horace Slughorn, Flitwick, McGonagall, Molly Weasley, they were the ones making the shield. Now, it could have been off screen, but that's what we know. Now, this one is just super annoying and has been there from the start. Why doesn't Voldemort kill Harry Potter? Now, he has, uh, he's had many opportunities and he seems kind of slow and he just, you know, sort of talks his way through it and then he's just like, Harry, I will kill you. And but never really does it because I don't know he just never manages to have the time or something happens somebody else comes somebody tries to save Harry somebody saves Harry and he is saved while well, there's a lot of in the movie he just never manages to kill Harry in a lot of times now of course initially Harry is protected from the first of Arakadabra where he dies in the Forbidden Forest dies as not really and then after that Harry Voldemort is having a one-on-one -on -one duel with Harry wherein he has a lot of chances to kill him however again he decides to use his, you know, black robe thingy to attack him and strangle him and do all sorts of choke hold moves. Yes, guys, that was it. That was all the Harry Potter series. Wow, there were a lot of them. Wow, I can't, I don't even know how many of that. But that was a lot, a lot of series from the first movie till the last movie. Now, keep in mind, these are just the movies because a lot of these mistakes, mistakes or sort of issues with Harry Potter have been fixed in the book. However, in the movies, they had to change them and certainly there will be problems. Nevertheless, I still love Harry Potter and I will watch it any day it comes on the TV and I still would read any of the books because I love the series so much and uh, yeah, that's it guys. Thank you so much for watching. I'll be making more of these videos. Now, if you've reached till here and you enjoyed all of these problems that I figured out, I really did research for them guys. So if you like these, if you like the video of course and subscribe if you want more of these videos because I'll be making more videos about movies, theory, a lot of problems with movies, top movies, my movie reviews, what I think about movies, my own theories, and debunking existing theories. So that's what I'll talk about. See you guys in another video. Bye-bye.